It's time for Culture Shift. Do not attempt to adjust your radio. There is nothing wrong. We have taken control as to bring you this special show. Culture Shift, your soundtrack to discovering the best in arts and culture in Detroit. The Stooges' last live recording is finally being released, at least their last live recording in the original lineup. It was 50 years ago this week the Stooges played their final show with that original lineup of Iggy, Ron and Scott Ashton, and Dave Alexander. That show was recorded but never released, eventually found buried in the basement of a Michigan farmhouse, according to legend. But now you can hear this vital recording from Michigan's godfathers of punk. Here's John Mosher. It was in August 1970, 50 years ago, that the famed Goose Lake Festival took place over three days outside of Jackson, Michigan. It was almost a year after Woodstock. The festival featured a rotating turntable stage to limit time between bands. The police, for the most part, looked the other way when it came to things like drugs and nudity. And 200,000 people showed up to see bands that included Rod Stewart with the Faces, Jethro Tull, Chicago, 10 Years After, The James Gang, local artists like Bob Seger, The MC5, and The Stooges. It would be the biggest audience Iggy Pop and the Stooges had ever or would ever play for. It was also the stuff of legend. For this would be the last gig with the original lineup of Iggy Pop, Ron and Scott Ashton, and Dave Alexander, as Alexander was promptly fired from the band by Pop immediately after the show. The story that passed around for decades was that he was too messed up on drugs and alcohol and that he couldn't play a single note. Then, 50 years later, the tapes were found, and they tell a slightly different story. These long-lost tapes have been restored as a document of what happened on that day, August 8, 1970, and comes out this week on Third Man Records. Let's welcome the Stooges! You guessed it, there's the bass guitar. And there they are, the very last performance from the original lineup of the Stooges in front of their biggest crowd ever. In anticipation of the release, I recently chatted with Ben Blackwell, co-founder of Third Man Records from his home down in Nashville, to talk about this historic document. They would never play in front of a bigger crowd. 200,000, as far as I can tell, is the biggest crowd they would ever play for. Now, obviously, they didn't know that at the time. But, uh, but yeah, this is the, uh, the kind of the display, the, the unveiling of Funhouse. If, if you didn't know anything that, that happened or was going to happen, you would just say, yeah, man, play in front of 200,000 people in your home state. Um, what is it, 60 miles from Ann Arbor? So it's basically uh, as, as close to a hometown show as could be. So obviously a pretty big deal for the band. Um, and my understanding is that they had rehearsed songs for Funhouse and were ready to unveil them. But going into this show, there was already some tension between Iggy and Dave Alexander, right? If you, if you talk to people who were around at that time, Dave had been withdrawing from the band. Uh, if you think of that classic 1960s, you know, stereotypical band, like they're, they're all living in a house and they're all eating the same food and they're, they're, everyone's on the same page. Uh, that seems to have been going away by this point, by uh, mid-1970. Um, Dave was, I, I think, you know, a lot of guys said he was kind of just spending more time uh, not with the band. I think he had a, a, a new girlfriend that, that may have played into it. I'm not 100% sure. I wasn't there. Some people say Dave was on his way out already. Uh, that it was, it was he, his time wasn't long for the Stooges. And that this performance goose lake um was wasn't necessarily um terribly egregious it was just the straw that broke the camel's back like you know just get it over with if this doesn't happen now it's going to happen six months from now what are we waiting for and of course legend had it that he was so messed up he couldn't play a note but here he is on the tapes a hundred percent so that i I've, i've 
you know, it's, it's funny when you're trying to put out this record, you want to make sure that the record's right. Right. You know, your audio is good and the liner notes and, and artwork and all that stuff. But then you're also trying to figure out the legend, which you, you address a little bit of it, but then you're also, how deep do you go? So I've been, tr I've been trying to figure out where the first time that story of Dave Alexander being too stoned to play actually turns up. You don't see it immediately after the festival. Um, there's different pieces of press, like underground newspaper stuff. There's a story, I'm pretty sure it was written by Frank Bach of The Up that was printed in the Ann Arbor Argus, where he's got a super detailed critique of, of Goose Lake as a whole in regards to coming from the White Panther revolutionary mindset. Um, but he doesn't say that, you know, Dave Alexander didn't play any bass. Um, and there's another, uh, there's another report. Uh, I think Lisa Melman was a, a writer, uh, who wrote for some of these, one of these underground newspapers. And, uh, she's talking more about the, the, the festival, the Iggy trying to incite the crowd to, to tear down the festival barriers. Uh, she doesn't mention anything about Dave Alexander not playing bass. So at some point, somewhere this this story comes out that Dave Alexander didn't play bass and that's why he got fired. I mean, I feel like I've I've heard that at least for 20 years and it's probably been going around longer than that. But this recording and I'm not trying to sound fantastic or anything, but this recording 100% refutes that. I don't think anyone would say his performance is perfect. Um there's definitely uh rough spots. But based on what had been drilled into my head for the entire time I've been a Stooges fan, uh, it was shocking how good the performance was based on what I expected to hear. I would say, you know, Loose is pretty... Uh, I don't think Dave ever finds his footing on Loose. He, he kind of goes into the, the chorus or, or the pseudo-chorus um, like a beat early or a bar early every time, all three times that it happens. But... Uh, but yeah, man, it's it's just I had my jaw on the floor when I heard that it was there. I'll bet. So tell me how these tapes were found and how they ended up in your possession. So uh, there, there's there's missing bits of information that we don't know one hundred percent. But the the tapes were almost certainly recorded by a man named James Casilli. And James was a uh, audio engineer in Michigan uh, from the late '60s, I think, through the through the '80s, uh, '90s, possibly even. His son, a, na a man by the name of Joshua Rogers, they were cleaning out uh, this kind of house that had been in the family for 170 years. So the, supposedly, the oldest house in Kent County, Michigan. Joshua's mom had finally decided to sell the family house. And these tapes were found in there. He didn't even know if there was music on them, to be honest. He just saw a box that said Goose Lake, and in that box was a tape that said The Stooges. I would love to be able to spin you a tale of searching high and low and checking in attics and basements and crawl spaces and all that stuff, but to be, to be totally honest, Joshua just came to us and said, hey, I know Third Man. I know what you guys do. You have a solid reputation. I think this is something that might make sense with you guys. Uh, are you interested in, in even exploring? He said, I know there's a thousand different hurdles that would need to be jumped for it, but you know, do you want to at least try the first hurdle with me? And he came to us, but we got all the reels transferred. So all, all the tapes that he had from Goose Lake, which isn't everyone. We don't have Seeger. There's no MC five. There's no faces. Um, but to be totally transparent like the stooges was kind of my all or nothing and uh so when i got the transfers back that was the first thing i was listening to and uh man just just smile that you could not wipe off of my face i'll bet how cool to be able to hear those after so many decades of of sitting so tell me about the condition of the tapes themselves and restoring them the the tapes you know physically were were legit. They were good. So you didn't have to bake them. You didn't have to edit anything together. The, the transfer was solid. Um, what we did was just basically a really, really in-depth EQ 
um, restoration, whatever you want to call it. And Bill Skibby mastered the tapes right here in Detroit, right? Yeah, I don't know. It might be the first, uh, might be the first Stooges record ever mastered in Detroit. I don't, uh, I don't know if it's ever happened before. So, pretty, pretty happy to to have done that. Yeah, he did that down in the the third man mastering uh, studio down in the Cass Corridor. Talk about the release itself, uh, the artwork, and how this thing is packaged for release. We had Jan Uleski, who's a Detroit native uh, and a uh, a wonderful person who wrote the liner notes. So she used to write for cream and she was there at the festival that day. So we, we tapped her to do the liner notes and she did a really stellar job and tracking down people that we wouldn't have, uh, that maybe hadn't even talked on the record about goose Lake before. Um, so she did really, really amazing job in the liner notes and, and the packaging itself is kind of like a, a, a rendering of a, of what we believe is the only onstage image of the band from goose Lake. And the record itself, yeah, CD, LP, uh, downloads and streaming. Um, what you hear is the entirety of the Stooges' time on stage. So you're, um, there's no edits. We didn't, uh, we didn't take out tuning or like uh, in-between song kind of nervous drum fills or whatever. That's all on there. But I, as a Stooges fan, I wanted to hear everything. I wanted to hear in-between song banter. I wanted to hear how Ron tunes his guitar in 1970. Um, and so we kind of left all of that in. I think it makes it a little bit more of a historical document that way, and I like that. What was Iggy's reaction? Obviously, you had to get his approval for this. I, I worked really, really uh, closely with his manager, uh, Henry McGrogan, um, who's a wonderful, wonderful man. And, uh, you know, when, when we're you know, at, at a certain stage... Henry kind of relays to me. He's like, I don't, Iggy's not so sure about the show. Um, he, he remembers it not being that good. And I said, well, you know, let's wait until he hears it and see how he, what he thinks. And Henry comes back and Iggy says, wow, it's a lot better than he remembered. I hope that it really better tells the story of the Stooges because as much as it's been told through books, through documentaries, through, releases archival and all of that nature maybe it's a little that detroit underdog aspect on uh chip on my shoulder but i still don't think they really get their due you know the stooges should be uh they should be on par with the velvet underground they should be mentioned in that same breath with david bowie um and oftentimes they are but i still think that they've lacked the proper, I, I guess this live recording, I think, helps get closer to that. I think indeed it does. The Stooges Live at Goose Lake is released on Third Man Records this week. I'm John Mosier for Culture Shift. Many thanks to Ben Blackwell from Third Man Records. Here they are recorded 50 years ago this week, August 8th of 1970 at the Goose Lake Festival. This is The Stooges with TVI. <laughs>
Stooges recorded live at Goose Lake in 1970. Finally being released on record from Third Man Records. It'll be uh, released uh, on the date, the exact date of the festival, which is August 8th. So check it out there. Thanks to John Mosher for talking with Third Man's Ben Blackwell for that particular piece. Learned quite a bit about how the Stooges were uh, at the end of their... uh, their days with the final lineup, at least. You're listening to Culture Shift here on 1019 WDET. Lots more coming up just after this.